Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you are having the most wonderful day of your life today. Today, I want to go through a question on a vertical loop and talk about the normal forces at the top and the bottom of a vertical loop. So this is a circle not drawn to scale. And what it has, it is as a mass that's traveling around the vertical loop with a V tangent to the circle equal to 14 meters per second. Also given is the radius of this circle is 1.5 meters. That was given right here. Also, the mass of the block is 0.5 kilograms. That was given right here. Okay. I'm going to assume that little g is 10 meters per second squared. If you're on another level, you might see this called 9.8 meters per second. But here on the AP level, we can call that 10. And what I'm going to do is I want to know the Fn at the top and the bottom. So we'll work on those two first, and then we'll tackle the minimum speed later. Okay, so if I look at the top of the block, there are going to be two forces that are acting on this block. Where you're going to have the force of the normal, and the force of the normal is the force that the surface right here pushes on the block. And then also gravity, Fg, is going to pull the block downward towards the center. And remember guys, towards the center, that equals the positive direction. Okay, so it's not like in kinematics where up and down and left and right are positive and negative. Everything towards the center of the circle is going to be positive. So when I look at the net force at the top, when I look at the net force on the top of the circle, I have Fn and I have an additional Fg. Those are the two forces, but we have a special name for the net force when it's acting in a circle. The special name is called Fc. So I can then say that Fc equals Fn plus Fg. Now I'm solving here for Fn, so I'm going to rewrite this as Fn is going to equal Fc minus Fg, gravity. Then I will sub in my knowns and my givens for these particular items. I know that Fc is equal to mv squared over r. And I know that Fg is equal to mg. So now when I substitute in, and I'm going to list my units because that's proper practice, kilograms times 14 meters per second squared. Don't forget this square. That happens all the time. Divided by R, 1.5 meters. And that's going to be minus 0.5 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. So when I solve all of that out and I do some quick algebra, I am going to see that Fn at the top of the incline or at the top of this loop is going to be 60.3 newtons. So this is how you solve for the force of the normal at the top. Now when we want to go to the bottom of the incline here, we will go about a similar practice. We will look at the forces acting on this object. We are going to have gravity that's down this way, Fg. And we are going to have the force of the normal that points up this way. So now if I look at the net force, F net, that's going to equal Fn, which once again, guys, is positive because Fn goes towards the center, minus Fg. So a common error would be to say, we made Fn and Fg, we made those positive, therefore this Fg has to be positive. Not the case. Remember, it's super important, down the incline. And the fancy F net that we have for a circle is equal to Fc. Therefore, Fn is going to be equal to Fc plus Fg. So essentially, I'm going to have the same thing that I have over here, but now the sign just changes. So when I do this math, I see that we get an answer of 70.3 newtons. 
okay? And the way that I found that out was when I solved the FC that came to 65.3 newtons, and that's this. This came to 63.3 plus another 5.5 times 10. That's this. So if we see at the bottom, the normal force is greater. That means the surface has to work harder here than it does here, which makes sense because up here, gravity helps the normal. We're here, gravity hurts the normal. The next thing we're gonna look at is how can I find the minimum speed needed to get over the block, all right? And this is super important as well. When I see this phrase, minimum speed, min speed, or even max speed when we're going over a hill. What we're looking for is a case where Fn is equal to zero newtons. Because if we look at this circle, if I'm not fast enough to get to here, will the surface be able to push on me? And the answer is no. So essentially we're looking for a speed where this number Fn is greater than zero. Okay, so once again, I am going to look at the forces that are going to be at the top. At the top, we had FC and we had FN, and that was from before. So our net force was equal to FC plus, I mean, not FC, I'm sorry, guys, FG plus FN. And that's going to equal the centripetal force. But we're saying that FN is going to be zero. So now we have a situation where G, FG equals FC, FG is our mass, MG, FC is M, V squared over R, which is given. These M's will do a wonderful thing and cancel out, and then V will just become the square root of G times R. And we could solve for that by saying the square root of 10 meters per second squared, and the R in this particular case was 1.5 meters Therefore, the minimum speed needed to get over the top would be greater than 3.6 meters per second. And that's how you solve for the normals and the minimum speeds on a vertical loop, guys. Have a good one.